Uh, Coach, uh, the non-injury related absence today on the injury report, is that a personal day or are we dealing with something else? Who's that? I think it was Hoskins. Yeah, he's got he's got a personal issue to handle. Thank you. Any more questions for Coach? Who'd like to go next? We'll go to Darren Gant. Matt, could you talk about what you saw out of uh, CJ in his first day of practice and, and what you think maybe the timeline is for getting him acclimated to what you guys do and sort of teaching him the system here? Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't have a real uh, good perspective yet on what he did. I have to go in and watch the tape. Um, um, so, you know, I'm not, sure what, I'm not sure what his role will be or anything of that nature for this week. Um, I know uh, Coop's started to teach him. Uh, some of the things that we do, and so as I said, you know, the other day, this is uh, for us. This is a long-term play. Um, it's good to have him out there. Glad to see that he's healthy, um, and we'll just teach him. And uh, whenever he's ready, um, you know, we'll use him as needed. I will go to Lucas Weiss. Hi, Coach. Thanks for doing this. I'm just curious if you wouldn't mind just uh, sharing what you've seen from from Chuba Hubbard this week and. Maybe just elaborate on what his role is going to be on on Sunday against the Cowboys. Yeah, I mean Chuba is going to be the he's going to be our starting tailback. Um, you know he'll he'll play along you know in, in conjunction with Royce and then uh, probably uh, one of the other guys. Um, but I think those guys will you know shoulder most of the workload. Um, and uh, you know Chuba, you know we, we had a hard physical practice. Um, but uh, um, go back and watch the tape, see all his angles, his footwork, his timing, his targets, all those things. But uh, you know, Chuba loves to compete. Um, he's always a physical back out there, and uh, he looked like he was running hard today. So uh, I'll have a better feel after I watch it. But uh, I have full, full, full confidence in what he can do. Go to Jonathan Alexander, followed by Mike Swarte. Man, uh, you know, you just talked a little bit about Chuba and, and going back and watching the tape. But based on what you've seen so far, you know, in the couple of games, what are, what are the areas that you, you really want to see him, um, you know, accomplish this week as he prepares and to get more action in the leading role and running back? Yeah, you know, I've wanted to see him um, you know, really play with his feet underneath him. You know, he's had a lot of times where he's slipped and fallen and, you know, cutting off his inside foot. Um, I thought once he got a couple carries in a row, I think that's one thing about backs is they like to get into a rhythm. I think once he got into a rhythm in the last game, you saw – uh, you saw that sort of dissipate, and uh, you saw him run with power and and speed. You know, um, so I want to see him do those things. And obviously, as I said earlier, he, you know he has to be good in protection. Uh, this is this is a, a team that we're playing, uh, the Dallas Cowboys, that, that can bring pressure. That have you know great rushers uh, at the linebacker level, at the defensive line level, and so need him to uh, help us in the passing game protection wise as well. And um, but, I, you know, we're, we've been preparing him that for a couple of weeks. So I think the biggest thing, Jonathan, is just keeping his feet underneath him and, and, and being a powerful, you know, fast slashing type runner. Can I ask, um, did you say when he slips and falls, that was because he cuts off his inside foot? Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. Can you, can you? Yes. You, so, you know, sometimes, you know, it really, really when you cut, you usually want to cut off your outside foot, you know, and then plan off your outside foot and step with your inside foot sometimes. Uh, sometimes when we get in a hurry at all positions, you know, we, we see a cut and we, we try to take it. And sometimes we take off our inside foot, you know, our foot goes out from underneath us. So, you know, I'm not a running back coach, you know, uh, Jeff does a great job of that. But, uh, some, you know, just sometimes he's had runs where he's just lost his footing. And, um, um, but, I, you know, we, we've kind of been saying to ourselves, like, hey, when, when he gets in a rhythm, the more he plays, you know, the more comfortable he'll be. He never saw that in college. And so I think, you know, as the game slowed down for him, um, you'll see him. You know, and we have seen him um, play with more of a base. Matt, there is no blessing in disguise to losing a guy like Christian to an injury at any at any point in time. But with him going out as early as he did Thursday, that allowed you to kind of expand the playbook and get other guys, uh, you know, touches and, and, and reps in, in spots that they may not have had Christian been playing. How does that maybe benefit you going forward this week uh, against the Dallas team with uh, with the way that they bring pressure. Yeah, no, Mike I, Mike, I agree completely. You know, you go back two weeks ago, um, you know, he was obviously out for most of the third quarter this past game, you know, for, for part of the first half and the rest of the second half. 
So Chuba and Royce have gotten in the game. They have played, you know. So, um, you know, we feel very comfortable with them. And, um, um, uh, you know, I think I think part of what Joe has been able to do this week with our guys or what he has to do this week is make sure that we're, we're being as aggressive as we can as we put together a game plan and um, make sure that make sure that we do the things that we do well while also featuring the things that our, our players do well because this is a defense we're facing that's you know they're going to load the box they're they're, they're going to play man coverage they're going to play match coverages um, you know so so our backs have to be equally as good running the football as is in protection and and getting out in, in routes and so um, uh, having those guys have a chance to play was good for us, and, and you know, so so we know what they can do, and now we'll just try to feature that on Sunday. Go to Will Palachik, followed by Scott Fowler. Matt, in terms of the decision to to not bring anybody else, is that more of a characterization of you like what you have, or more optimism on Christian's timetable, or just uh, you didn't see anything out there that you felt like was worth taking a chance on? Um. You know, I think Scott does a great job of always, you know, having lists and looking for the next guys. I think, um, you know, he was tracking a couple guys, um, some of whom, you know, the, the new rules now where, where veteran players can be on practice squads has sort of changed the landscape of pro football. Um, you know, um, and, and I think we're optimistic that, you know, we didn't feel like we had to put Christian on IR, that he would, he, he would have a potential of being back before uh, the, that fourth game. So I think those two things together and then, Again, having Rodney Smith on the practice squad, you know, he's a guy who started football games for us last year. And, you know, he, he, he got hurt in training camp and so, you know, ended up on the practice squad. But he's someone that we know knows our offense. And so we're happy with Chuba, we're happy with Royce, and we're also uh, very confident in what, um, in what Rodney can do. Would you say, just to follow up, would Rodney be somebody who'd be a candidate for, for a game day elevation of some sort? Yeah, he, he and Spencer both. Spencer Brown, I mean, we, we like both those players. And so... Uh, we're prepared to bring them up um, at, at any time. Matt, uh, now that you've immersed yourself fully in the Cowboys, I just wondered if I don't think we've heard your, you know, sort of specific impressions of them and particularly where their strengths are on offense. Well, um, you know, when, when you talk about their when you talk about their offense, I think you have to start with Dak Prescott. And I think he's, um, you know, I've watched him last year, I've watched him this year. I mean, he's he's superb. You know, he calls the game at the line of scrimmage. Gets get, he's he's getting the ball out of his hand. You know, he's the, he's the second fastest guy in the NFL right now from snap to throw, which is you know uh, emblematic or symptomatic. I don't know the right word of of of, of a quarterback who knows exactly where the ball is going to go versus the defense, who's on the same page with his receivers, who's getting in the right plays versus the right you know coverages, who's making sure that he's protected. They have a magnificent offensive line. I mean, uh, you know, Tyron Smith at left tackle is a perennial pro, pro bowler. Um, you know, um, uh, uh, Martin's a, a great player, pro bowler. Um, and then outside, you know, C.D. Lamb's guy, we competed against a bunch in, in college. Tremendous, tremendous wide receiver. Amari Cooper's one of the best players in the game. Um, uh, the tailbacks, you know, <laughs> you know Zeke and, uh, and um, uh, um, uh, Pollard, um, just, just excellent players. So I think they have the ability to run the football and throw it. Um, they'll matriculate the ball down the field or they'll be explosive. But I think when you just put the, pull the whole thing back, it all goes back to it's like watching Peyton Manning. It's like watching Drew Brees, you know, call the game at the line of scrimmage. Um, I, think, I think what Dak's doing right now is uh, unbelievably impressive. I appreciate the Hank Stram reference. Thank you. <laughs> we'll go to Steve Reed, followed by Joe Person. Hey, Matt, I came in about 30 seconds late, so I apologize if, uh, if you've been asked this. But Christian allows you to do so many different things, you know, not only in the running game, but also in the passing game because, you know, the defenses are having to, you know, prepare for everything. How much does it uh, limit what you can do maybe? Offensively, with not having him in there, yeah, I think we're I think we're just going to go out and, and, and run our offense. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you, you can't replace uh, the production of Christian McCaffrey, um, but but those other pl players are they're, they're, they've been waiting for their opportunity, and, and who knows what they can do when given an opportunity. So, um, I don't think it's fair, or right, to Sam and you know to to the offensive line and to to, to kind of go away from what we've been doing. You know, we've We've been working on it for a long time. 
So yeah, we will feature some you know different things, and every week there's certainly different formations and shifts and motions and um, different concepts that we work versus different coverages. But at the end of the day, you know our running backs are going to carry the football, and they have to get open and they have to win and you catch the ball in coverage. And so that's that, that's why we select these guys, and um, I think to a man, each one of them is ready to go out there and do the best that they can and, and make plays uh, versus a great defense. Matt, what were your first impressions of CJ, and do you have a better idea what his role, immediate role, might be? Yeah, they, they asked me that at the beginning. Um, I, I said, you know, I hadn't really had a chance, much of a chance to, 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 to see him out there. Um, you know, he was obviously out there. I, I came right off the practice field, so I haven't had a chance to watch the tape yet. Um, but you know he, he's healthy. Um, you know he has to he has to learn some he has to learn you know, some more of what we do. Um, he's got to learn the system. Uh, so you know, he'd probably start in a limited role. And if I don't know if that's this week or not, to be quite honest with you, I think we'll go through, watch the tape, see what he's ready for. Um, you know the guys that have been practicing and preparing. You know been with us for a while. Those are the guys that you know we trust to go win the game. And we'll bring CJ along. And whenever he's ready to help us, you know he'll go help us. Um, and you know it's great to have AJ out there today, uh, really in a you know full time role for the first time. Um, so uh, we've been training these guys, and, and they're good players. We expect them to play well. Do you have an idea what safety is going to look like? Uh, you know, we, we'll obviously Chin will be one of the safeties, and then uh, you know Champ or Sam uh, will will play the other safety. We'll go to Vashti Hurt, followed by Will Kunkel. Hi, Coach. Um, the Panthers are one of a few, a handful of three and O teams. Teams are undefeated. And I know you guys look at every week as one and O. But if you look at the national coverage of Carolina, there always seems to be an asterisk next to the wins. And a lot of people are saying that this will be the first true test for this team. What do you say about people who – what do you say to that to that sentiment? I, I appreciate it and love it. <laughs> I, I, I would much prefer that than people saying that we're good. Um, you know, I, I tell our team all the time, man, you know what I love about this team? I love, I love, I love the team that was down at Wofford living in dorm rooms for four weeks – that was, you know, you know, eating in the cafeteria. I, 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 I like, I like the team that no one gave a chance to. Um, well, I just, I just want to stay as, as long as I can. I want to stay the Wofford Panthers, man. I want to, I want to be that team down there. Team at the joint practices. Um, so, you know, it's amazing. You know, when you, you know, when, 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 when you're not winning, people, you know, say one thing. When you're winning, people say another thing. At the end of the day, man, like, I'm, I'm not gonna let anyone else define me. I don't want our players let anyone else define them. Um, it's about this game and this week. And then you know what? We, we still have eight more after this game and a bye and then five after that. So not any one game or any three-game stretch defines any team in this league. So uh, I'm, I'm just so focused on these guys this week. Um, you know, we had a good practice today. It was hot, full pads. I thought they came out with energy. Um, so we'll do the best we can this week. Go play. This is one of the best teams. You know, this is one of the best teams we're facing in the NFC. It's just like the, the best offense in the National Football League. So – We'll play them and, and, and do the best we can and, and, you know, go out there and play as hard as we can, try to go 1-0 and then come back the next week and do the same thing. And to me, you know, the reason why I always say 1-0 to me, Vashti, is like I, I always look at like the Navy SEALs. Like, like these are the best of the best of the best, and, and, and they, go to, they go off to buds, right, and, and only a few make. And it's really because you know, who has the ability to withstand the volume? It's not that you can't do it. It's just the volume of like day after day after day, waking up early, doing the same thing. And so – this is a test for our players. You know, this is a test for me. Like, you know, can, can we as coaches, can you handle 17 games in 18 weeks plus training camp of just the volume of waking up at 5 a.m. or 5.30 and practicing of the heat of all those things? And so, um, so yeah, I mean, people, people, it's fun for people when, you, you know, you should hear me with basketball and baseball. Like, I have an opinion about everything. I don't know a thing about basketball. I don't know a thing about baseball. Um, you know, we're, as fans, we're supposed to have opinions. As on TV, we're supposed to have it. It's what makes this game great. And so I love it all. I think it's fun. I, you know, I love listening to everything about football. But for us and our team, I just want them to stay humble and stay hungry. You know, I want them to go out and prepare uh, at a high level and then play really confidently. Hey, Matt. Um, you guys are dominating time of possession, second in the NFL right now. Is that a cognizant effort or just kind of how the games have fallen? And then that's kind of where we sit right now. Yeah, I think, I think, I think it's really twofold, right? Um, um, it, it, sometimes time of possession can be good or bad. I think we've gotten off the field really well on defense. And, you know, I think we're probably the number one uh, defense in the National Football League right now for third down. So getting off the field has helped us a ton. Um, so, you know, our offense, and then I think offensively we've had a bunch of long drives. Now, part of that is we're not 
getting a bunch of 60 and 70 yard touchdowns and scoring quickly. So I would love to be a little bit more explosive with our offense, uh, have some more big plays. But we have, you know, um, we have stayed on the field, moved the ball, and had some, you know, 11 play drives. I think we had a 16 play drive. I'm not sure. Um, um, you know, we've, we've flipped the field a couple times. So uh, I think it's just a function of what we're doing well, well right now. Um, I'd like to do it more like one of the things for me is our defense played 50, 46 plays and I think 48 plays the last two games or something like that. So, you know, your defense is usually playing 60 or 70 plays. We're playing 40 plays. So, um, but this week will be a whole different week, you know, a whole different game. And, and uh, we have to be prepared, you know, defensively versus their tempo and their no huddle packages. You know, for, we have to be prepared to go, you know, 70, 80 plays if need be. And then real quick to follow up on that, Sam Darnold's had some guys open down the field. It looks like on the all 22, but he's taken guys that are open underneath. So it's not like he's making poor decisions. But have you wanted him or talked to him about, you know, kind of layering it out here and there? If you see someone, don't be afraid or just be safe, be cautious, keep the ball. Um, we don't tell anybody to be cautious. We have, you know, we have progressions. Um, and so some plays are deep to short. Some plays are – there's a guy clearing out. Some deep plays are high to low. Some some plays have man beaters. You know, um, he had a deep shot to Robbie last week that he threw later in the game to to DJ. That you know, I just think he saw the corner falling off. But I, you know, based upon what I've seen, you know, I, there's not one part of me that's worried that Sam's not being aggressive enough. Um, I think he's pushed the ball down the field, and so. Um, the biggest thing for me with Sam is just keep playing within the system. Don't try to do too much, you know. But um, 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 yeah, I think that's that, that's really how I see it. We got time for one more. Let's go to Nick Carboni. Matt, I hopped on about a minute late. Sorry if you've been asked this. Um, how do you see Micah Parsons and, and the way he can affect the game for their defense? And and how much did you guys take a look at him in the draft evaluation process? Oh well, Mike is someone we looked at just you know um, you know a, a lot. I mean, he's an unbelievable athlete. You know, a Penn Stater um, um, uh, out of Harrisburg. Um, you know, six four runs four three um, plays with an aggressiveness. I mean, it made some unbelievable plays last week. Got you know, got 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 uh, you know, took the dive on the zone read turn and, and ran Jalen Hurts down on the sideline. Uh, who's who's a great you know athlete and quarterback. So I think Mike is uh, fantastic, and uh, you know he was playing Mike and playing in some of their packages. They can play him off the ball. They can have him rush the passer. He can walk up and and and, and mug and pick for you know in, in their sort of their five down type. Um, uh, pass rush packages. So uh, he, he's a special, special talent. And I think the thing is on defense, you know, Dan Quinn's our defensive coordinator, you know, a guy I got to know just a little bit uh, last year, have a lot of respect for him. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be an aggressive front that's going to get after you, uh, going to rush you. And I think Mike is one of those guys. And then, you, you, you know, Randy Gregory's on the other side, who's an excellent, excellent, excellent football player, a tremendous pass rusher. Um, so they have, they have a, 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 a good system and then that lets you be aggressive. And then Mike is being moved around. So for us, you know, we, you know, one of the big challenges this week is, you know, they have guys that play ball. They, we talk about chess pieces sometimes. They've got, you know, they've got Kirst. They've got Micah Parsons. They've got a bunch of guys who are chess pieces. They can move around. And so a big deal for us is going to be identifying those guys in the run game and protection game.